my name is Hugh Reed, and I want to talk to you about uh, scoring high on the law of property. Property. Now, property may not be your favorite, particularly since uh, you know we include such things as the rule against perpetuity, Shelley's case, doctrine of worthier title, and whatnot. Um, I can tell you this: that all property exams have to be analyzed first of all by the importance of what's being tested. Duh. That is really the most important thing you can do. Now, I'm not just talking conceptually. I have been taking examinations on a regular basis for the last 30 years. I'm licensed in numerous states by taking the exam uh, every six months, the multi-state bar exam. And since it's a confidential exam, I get to take a look at these questions. Up to 60 questions are repeat questions. I cannot divulge these questions uh, for uh, legal and ethical reasons. However, I can make sure that our students understand how this is tested. So for every property exam, the first thing we do is we look at the outline. And if you're a law professor, if you're still in law school, uh, uh, publishes an outline as to our syllabus, as to what's being tested, that's your starting point. We, can, we of course, can send you an outline in Word that you can annotate appropriately uh, with your law school notes. If you're getting ready for the bar exam, we know exactly what's being tested because the outline we follow and our outlines are uh, are, are exactly like the National Conference of Bar Examiners outline. And property is tested in five major categories. The bar examiners tell us category one, ownership of land, including uh, future interests and uh, concurrent estates and the like. Uh, number two, rights in land, such as uh, uh, incorporal rights, such as easements and restrictions on others' use of their land. Uh, number three, real property contracts, which really incorporates a lot of the principles of contracts into, uh, into property. Number four, real property mortgages, scares a lot of people, but very easily handled. And number five, titles, including adverse possession, conveyancing by wills, redemption, exoneration, lapse, anti-lapse, and the like. So what I want to do a little bit is give you some pointers, some mnemonics and memory devices. In my other life, I was in charge of a pilot training for the Army, and uh, we've, we taught, uh, teach pilots in the Army using checklists, mnemonics, memory devices, so they can perform well under high anxiety conditions. And I use the same approach for people taking exams. Because of the three things you're going to be tested on, law knowledge, number one, law expression, number two, law analysis, number three, law knowledge is something that should come to you without even thinking about it. So we use these mnemonics and memory devices just to let people know uh, exactly um, how to remember these things. Let me give you some examples to drive the point home. The freehold estates, for example, freehold estates, I remember with L-E-F-T, or left, that is, life estates, fee tails, and S, simple, fee simple, lefts. Life estates, fee tails, fee simple, lefts. The three fee simple estates I remember with the acronym SAD, S-A-D. Simple, subject to condition, subsequent, subsequent. A, absolute, fee simple, absolute. And D, determinable, fee simple, determinable. So those are the three fee simple estates. Joint tenancies with right of survivorship. One of three concurrent estates uh, is the joint tenancy with right of survivorship. You get several questions on these. The others, of course, are tenancies by the entireties and um, uh, the uh, <laughs> tenancies by the entireties and uh, uh, common, uh, uh, joint tenancies by the entireties and tenancies in common. Tendencies is common. Three concurrent estates. So joint tendencies with right of survivorship, tendencies by the entireties between a husband, two husband and wife, and tendencies in common. The law disfavors joint tendencies with the right of survivorship because these tendencies in your or pass on automatically. They don't go through probate. So states are not subject to taxing these estates. So how are they created? Well, they have to be created with the acronym PITT, P-I-T-T-T. -T -T. Possession, interest, 
time, and title. Possession, interest, time, and title. What does that mean? That means that any conveyance has to be by possession, by interest, equal interest, at the same time at the, with passing title at the same time. So that's what it means. Concurrent interests in land, uh, the four unities as they're called sometime. What are some other mnemonics that I can give you that perhaps will help you remember things? Oh, how about adverse possession tested in category five? Adverse possession. The elements of adverse possession are heluva, H-E-L-U-V-A, heluva. Hostile, E, exclusive, L, lasting, U, uh, uninterrupted, V, visible, visible, and A, actual, actual. So the characteristics of adverse possession, that is taking title from someone, the rightful title owner, by adverse possession, stands for hell of a hostile, exclusive, lasting, uninterrupted, visible, and actual. So a party who's an actual, open, continuous, exclusive, and hostile possession of another's land for the requisite period now acquires title by virtue of the running of statute limitations. And of course, in order for that title to be marketable, uh, we have to quiet title. That is, we have to go to court and we have to have a, um, a judge uh, acknowledge, a judicial acknowledgement that you have title for it to be marketable. Recording statutes. These give a lot of people headaches. We have three types. We have a race statute. We have a notice or pure notice statute. We also have a race notice statute. Race notice statute. And the whole idea behind recording statutes is to give bona fide purchasers a heads up, protect bona fide purchasers. By definition, a person who pays value without notice in good faith. That's a bona fide purchaser. He's a favorite of the law, <coughs> and excuse me, we want to protect him. If you want to remember the types of notice, you can remember CIA. CIA gives notice, CIA. Constructive notice, inquiry notice, and actual notice. Constructive notice, recording statutes, constructive notice. Inquiry where a reasonable person would inquire as to what the zoning is, for example, or actual notice if somebody really under, knows exactly um, what's going on here. So these are some of these mnemonics uh, that we like to uh, we like to give our students to to shore them up on law knowledge. Let's go back to ten, uh, concurrent estates. I've given you the pit mnemonic for uh, joint tenancy with right of survivorship. Let me give you a mnemonic for how you sever a joint tenancy by the entirety, that is between husband and wife. I remember them with the four D's. That's how you sever one. D, the first D, divorce. It severs a joint tenancy with right of survivorship. The second D is death. One spouse dies, automatically vests title in the other spouse. The third D is dual transfer dual transfer by both parties. And then the fourth D, debtor in bankruptcy. A trustee in bankruptcy will take possession of half and divide the other half to the other spouse. So some of these, uh, these are some of the mnemonics and memory devices that will help you. If you want more of them, go to our website, readlawgroup.com. You get a free study aid there. Or Call us at 800-852-3926. Thank you and good luck.